Uh, but we really appreciate that our sponsors step up, to step up to that and are supporting our own independent journalism. Um, and with that, I want to introduce our first sponsor uh, for these uh, for our Coffee Break sponsors. And uh, that's Lyle Stevens, who's the co-founder and CEO of Maverick. Um, it's a, uh, uh, it's a uh, all-in-one influencer marketing platform that enables companies like P&G, Godiva, and PepsiCo. Please welcome Lyle. Thanks, Steve. Morning. I know I'm between you and a coffee break, so I'm going to try and keep this as brief as I can. Uh, so my name's Lyle. I'm co-founder and CEO of Maverick. Uh, as Steve mentioned, we're an influencer marketing platform, but we help brands automate and scale your influencer, advocacy, referral, and even your ratings and reviews programs. Basically anything that requires managing people, we can help you scale. So who here is using influencer marketing today in their brand? All right, about a third of the audience. How many of you think your influencer marketing programs are at scale? I see two hands. Two, okay. So we've been tracking influencer marketing since 2014, looking at FTC disclosure hashtags on public content, and you can see it's grown exponentially over the last couple of years. 2016 is when we saw the first major holiday spike, and then again in 2017. And we're anticipating this trend to continue into this year. And what we've noticed is that most marketers are still using influencers in a very limited capacity. They're activating maybe a few dozen influencers for cash payment to create brand awareness uh, out of your media team. And that's a good place to start. But what we're trying to do is help you use influencers in a way that is much more strategic. Leveraging only a dozen influencers at a time is like using your cell phone to only make phone calls. And you know, half of you are checking emails today, answering Twitter messages, whatever it might be. That's what you need to do when you're thinking about your influencer programs, is how do I unlock the infinite potential of influencers across my entire consumer journey? And it starts with leveraging multiple pieces of content. Most influencers will create photo content and video content, but a lot of us forget about ratings and reviews, survey responses, referral links, or even blog content. Someone who does this really well is Amazon. Amazon has a six-part influencer marketing strategy allows them to create content at scale and drive social proof across their entire ecosystem. And at Maverick, we've helped a number of customers do the same thing by creating influencer-generated content that goes on their product pages that drives 40% higher conversion rates, ratings and reviews that drive 30% higher conversion rates, and referral traffic that converts at three times higher than any other traffic source. We've done this for a number of brands. We've activated over two million consumers over the last three years. And the content you get when you activate influencers these days is quite high. So here's Oreo. All this content, you can search it on Instagram, Kroger, uh, hashtag Kroger Oreo. All this content was produced for less than $100 per post. And they created over 150 pieces of content in one day around uh, National Oreo Day. And that's one campaign they do. They do about two campaigns a month. All very high quality content not spammy in any way, all unique to the influencer. So I want to talk about how you can achieve content like this at scale with your own brand. So step one is starting with some sort of framework for your strategy. Most marketers want to try influencer marketing because it's the hot new thing, but I don't have any strategy behind it. First is starting with success in mind. Once you have how you want to measure, whether it's sales lift, brand lift, or even just savings, I want to spend 1% of my media budget to lift the other 99% with high quality content. You then want to use benchmarks to set KPIs on a quarterly or annual basis. Then you take into account any of your brand's constraints. Are you online only? Are you a luxury brand? Are you a startup brand? And the output is a strategy that talks about, here's my objective. Here are the influencers I'm going to use. Here's how I'm going to recruit them. Here's how I'm going to measure them and how I'm going to incentivize them. The key here is starting at the top. How am I going to measure ROI? Usually most people are trying to drive sales. We should you should definitely try and do that. But time savings, media savings, and content savings is also a huge part of the equation. We've had a number of customers actually let go of their creative agency as a result of scaling their influencer program. Once you have a strategy in place, step two is actually leveraging the full spectrum of the different type of influencers. There's five major personas of influencers. At the top, you have people that get paid professionally to create high quality content. You have folks that do influencer marketing as a side hustle. They have a day job like you and I. You have folks that create content for brands they're passionate about, 
but not with the high quality. Others will share links and promo codes, but only when the incentive is right and they'll put no effort into it. And you have folks that won't ever share, but they'll create ratings and reviews for your product. You want to own those relationships with those different personas versus outsourcing it to your agency. Who here uses their PR agency or their other agencies to manage influencer marketing? A few folks. I would highly recommend taking that in-house or at least being closely knit to the strategy because these are your most valuable customers over time. Then once you're looking to recruit influencers, you should start with your existing assets. You have website traffic, you have an email list, you have a CRM list, you have a social presence. What we find at Maverick is that per one million consumers that you can interact with via those assets, about 8% of them will have relevant influence for your brand. And you can activate 1% of them monthly to create content. An example of how to do this is just putting a, a landing page on your website. Uh, to acquire brands, or excuse me, influencers. Uh, Rosefield's one of our customers, and I'll show you later, they acquired 45,000 uh, individuals in the first 90 days of using Maverick. Once you're recruiting these people, you wanna use uh, fraud detection, so who here is concerned about influencer fraud? Two hands, three hands. So at Maverick, we've built an algorithm that looks at the anomalies between someone's engagement uh, engagement rate against their follower count based on the size of their audience. And if there are major anomalies, we then do a second layer of analysis using national language processing and video uh, analysis and image recognition to understand who are these people that are following these brands and whether or not they're real. Once you've picked who you want to activate, you want to activate them in the way that's best for that persona. So at the top of the spectrum, you want to create original content. These are your content creators. They have the best aesthetic for your brand. In the middle of the spectrum, you want to re refer friends, usually via trackable links or promo codes. And at the bottom of the spectrum, you want to use ratings and reviews to drive social proof. If you had to pick one uh, type of influencer, I would recommend micro-influencers. They're the most uh, cost-effective and drive the most trust and authenticity within your uh, target consumer base. Once you're selecting influencers, you want to automate that workflow. You don't want to use spreadsheets anymore if you're activating hundreds or thousands of influencers per month. You then want to also activate within the natural or native language of these influencers. So a lot of marketers are still focused on US only, but there's a huge opportunity globally for influencer marketing. The communication is also critical. So most of the communication needs to be personalized, but personalized at scale. When you have folks that are opting into your influencer program, you're getting a first party data opt-in, you can leverage all that data to give them very targeted personal information uh, to actually make them feel like they're part of a unique program, even though you're activating thousands of them every month. Lastly is incentivizing. So most people are still paying cash to influencers, but you can use a number of different incentive mechanisms like promo codes, brand experiences, free product. At the top of the spectrum, you want to incentivize based on the activity because these individuals are creating high quality pieces of content for you. So they're going to demand some sort of compensation at the front. But once you do start activating hundreds, if not thousands of influencers, you also need to automate that incentive fulfillment and tracking, especially if you're using promo codes. No one wants to track spreadsheets anymore. So with that, I want to show you a couple of case studies. Uh, so I've mentioned Rosefield. So in the first 90 days, this e-commerce brand got over 45,000 influencers to raise their hand and say, yes, I want to be part of your influencer program. They drove over 2,000 posts and almost 2 million clicks and engagements on those posts and a significant number of impressions. And this content is high quality content. Here's a quick video of some of the content that came in. You would assume that 2,000 posts in 90 days would be all spammy and not great content. All of these individuals have an aesthetic that matched what the brand was looking for and they created 2,000 posts of this aesthetic. You may be wondering, okay, so what, what about sales? Well, this beauty brand, similar playbook, drove over 3,000 posts in the first 90 days, and our ROI of over 500% in trackable sales on the use of promo codes that were contained in those posts. And then for a global CPG brand, this brand activated about 1,800 people in 90 days, and they were measuring offline sales lift via Nielsen Catalina sales lift study. The goal was a 3% sales lift in three target markets, and it, they drove 10%. At Maverick, we work with a number of different brands across a, a number of verticals. So if you're curious of whether influencer marketing can work for you, I'd love to talk with you during the coffee break. And so if you're seeking to rise above the noise via content consumer trust, 
I'd love to talk to you later. Thank you.